Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth NEAR Contract Standards Workgroup call. My name is Ori, and I am a moderator from the NEAR Developer DAO team, and I'm excited for us to look at a couple of net proposals today and make a decision about them. So here's our agenda. First, we'll discuss the objective of this call and provide some context about our NEAR Developer ecosystem as well as the NEP process. Next, we'll introduce all the participants that are involved, and then we'll get into the main discussion of NEP 452 and 469. You can follow the links for those in the video description. And after, we will open it up to QA and talk about the next steps. So to get started, let's discuss the purpose of today's call. We are here to publicly vote and arrive to a final decision on NEP 452 and NEP 469 and also to celebrate the effort and time that everyone invested into these NEPs as they went through a rigorous review by the community and many subject matter experts who all care about making our ecosystem better. Before we jump in, I want to give some more context to help contextualize our call. So when it comes to the near developer ecosystem, there are many ways for people to contribute from submitting ideas to implementing code. And we bring together people and organizations to help innovate in a decentralized way and provide social structures and tools to support that. And one of the main tools that we use is the Near Dev Hub, which is a platform for Near developers to contribute and stay informed. And it used to be called the Gigs Board, but we've recently changed the name to help better communicate the concept. And more changes are coming soon. But in the meantime, anyone is welcome to share their ideas, solutions, and get technical support and apply for funding. You can find various communities of people interested in specific topics on there, such as zero knowledge or tooling. And it's really just a great way to meet with others to share ideas. So in addition to the informal community groups, we also have formal work groups who help make decisions in various ecosystem areas, such as protocol and contract standards. And these groups have selected recognized experts to engage with the community and help review proposals in a thoroughly and timely manner. For example, they help make decisions on technical proposals that you may want to get integrated across the ecosystem, such as a new contract standards or protocol improvement. You can submit an idea for a technical proposal using a NEP, a near enhancement proposal, and this allows anyone to propose an idea to the ecosystem. And when a new NEP is submitted, the relevant working group will review it and move it through our NEP process, which includes these four roles, author, moderator, reviewer, and approver. The author is the person who uh, writes the proposal and presents, presents it to the working group. The moderator is the person who facilitates the process and helps move things along. The reviewer is an assigned technical subject matter expert uh, who reviews the technical feasibility. And then the approver is the work group who makes the final decision. In terms of visualizing the next process, there are three stages, draft, review, and voting, and two outcomes, approved and rejected. And all the roles that I just mentioned help move the NEP through these stages and towards the outcomes. And most of this happens asynchronously on GitHub. But when we do get to the voting stage, uh, the work group has an open public uh, call to arrive at the best decision in a transparent way, which is exactly what we're doing here today. We're executing this process and, and getting into the final voting stage on those two NEPs. So before we jump to the NEP themselves, I wanted to highlight the partic participants who have been involved uh, in those two NEPs. So uh, first we've had two authors. So Ben is the author of NEP 452 and Laclan is the author of NEP 469. I played a moderator role in the process. And we also had uh, some su subject matter experts that were assigned, Joe and Olga. And then we had two working groups that actually looked at the NEP. The, the main one was the, uh, the contract standards work group, which is made up of Vlad, Evgeny, Alexander, and Robert. Uh, and then we also had a representative from the wallet standards group, Cameron, look at it as well. So just in the interest of time, um, we're going to skip formal introductions, but please feel free to say hi in the chat, or at least when you speak up, just um, a quick hello. And with that, I'd love to move to the uh, actual NEP discussion. Um, and I'd love to start with NEP 452, Link Drop Standard, and invite the author of that NEP to present a summary of, of the NEP and why he believes it is important. So with that, I'd like to welcome Ben. 
to this. Hey, Ori, thanks for thanks for uh, for the introductions. Um, yeah, so I mean, I've been working with with link drops and sort of contracts for a very long time now, um, and with that came um, a need for a standardized interface because you're going to have all these wallets and all these link drops out in the wild. Uh, and just for a brief introduction of like what like what the heck is a link drop? It's it's essentially a way to embed assets within a link, uh, and it's a wallet agnostic solution to transfer assets and to create accounts uh, using NEAR's access keys. Um, and it's a, a really powerful tool. It's been used for years, um, but historically, all of the link drops lived on the one root NEAR contract and on the testnet contracts. Um, so you know as as companies and as projects and apps started to sort of push the boundaries and um, you know create custom link drop implementations, you had all these different link drops with all these different interfaces out in the wild. And from a wallet's perspective, or from a, as I like to call them, claim page perspective, if you have an arbitrary link drop, which essentially just a link containing like a contract and a secret key, how do you know how to claim it, right? And so we needed to uh, provide an interface that's standardized to allow for arbitrary link drops coming from any um, link drop creation platform to be able to be claimed. So for example, like Keypon makes link drops, near drop makes link drops, the you know root near contract makes link drops. You have all these link drops coming from all these different sources uh, and they need to all be claimable by wallets um, without the wallets needing to know like each individual implementation of how each of these different contracts do their things. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's, it's becoming more and more important as more wallets come out and as, you know, the blockchain operating system comes into play and, you know, you're going to have all these different platforms everywhere claiming and sending assets and stuff like that. And link drops are pretty cool for cross chain compatibilities. And so now is the time, uh, to standardize this and to make the updates before, before it gets out of hand. Awesome. Thanks so much, man, for that intro and also for, for writing this snip, uh, and working through it. So I guess Wait, really, really, really briefly, I also just wanted to, to give a quick shout out to Ken because I worked I worked a lot with Ken Miachi on on this uh, on this standard. Uh, so I think he's in the call. But uh, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ken, for for the hard work. We, we hopped on some calls and, and sort of um, developed out some of these solutions together. So thanks. Yes, thank you so much, Ken, and for, for being here today as well. Uh, we appreciate it. So I guess, um, as I mentioned, there were a lot of uh, you know, async discussions on the NEP itself and some benefits that were raised. So if there are any other benefits that maybe you haven't mentioned, maybe you could quickly highlight them just from the discussion. Um, yes, I mean we we've we've created this this standard um, in a, a way that is very extensible. Like a very a very good example is we're we're working with Monier Wallet uh, right now <clears throat> to to extend the standard. Um, and have like a custom key palm standard, which introduces like trial accounts that can be claimed via link drops. Anyway, so we've, we've, we've written the standard in a way that's very extensible for all these different types in the future. Um, we've also tried to make it backwards compatible as much as possible with existing implementations, just because we've had link drops for so many years. And there's all these platforms out there that, you know, are assuming a certain behavior. So we wanted to try to make it as backwards compatible as possible. Um, but for the purpose of this NEP, um, specifically in the past, it's just been sort of near link drops uh, so embedding you know a set amount of near tokens in a link and sending it to someone whereby they can claim it with, a, with an existing account or create an account uh, and claim it there all atomically but with this nep we've uh, we've taken that concept and uh, we've expanded on it to introduce support for fungible tokens and nfts embedded within links um there are some really cool things that we can do in the future to expand upon this even more like introduce function calls where when a link drop is claimed it executes an arbitrary function uh, i guess it's predefined by the funder but anyway, so um, that's kind of a, a high level overview of of this specific standard. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So in addition to the benefits, there were various concerns raised uh, throughout the discussion. And I'd love to invite uh, a couple of the work group members to maybe talk through them and uh, see if we can, yeah, resolve any of these. So uh, yeah, I guess, Alexander, did you want, were you okay with starting or did you want me to start with uh robert's list of concerns where should we start um i think we can start with that table uh, yeah with this one um i, I like I, I think overall the nap looks uh, pretty decent um however just had uh, many questions uh, related to technical details um like personally i was not familiar with the uh, link drops um 
And uh, so there were questions uh, like, I think the first one, like uh, for instance, why the heck to add the public key into the contract account <laughs> and so on. Um, I think we fixed um, many of the, uh, of our comments and um, still there are a few ones, um, few unresolved ones. I'm not sure how to proceed from this point as we have <laughs> probably the first uh, session in this format. Um, I would start with probably the most uh, like important one. Uh, I think this is the number seven and um, it's something still not resolved. So we have a few options how to define the claim method API properly. So there are a few uh, considerations like uh, backward compatibility with uh, existing contracts. And also for, uh, this is like one side of the things. Another side is that the method should be um, like, Agile or something like uh, good for standards, you know, so we shouldn't over standardize that, uh, from my opinion. And so we still have a few um, options. Uh, we can go uh, to the options on the GitHub, probably, then just uh, proposed a few cases in the last comment. So basically, um, I think uh, my Proposal and also Ben agrees that we probably could uh, use just a promise as a return type. And I'm not sure whether Vlad maybe, you know, <laughs> agree with it or other uh, members of this. Yeah, uh, group. Let, let me comment on it. Like, pro promise is a pack from the point of view of, a, yeah, it's all pack. of, the, of the client. So, defining a promise doesn't mean we define anything, uh, which means we don't define how to even reason about the success of the execution uh, there, which is the, the whole point of the whole <laughs> discussion is to what yeah. is oh, like successful uh, result and what is the failure result, because currently it's misaligned. The near uh, link drop uh, contract, the, the legacy one, um, or operates in an assumption that the panic would happen, that the, the transaction will fail uh, if the um, if something goes wrong. Um, while uh, Key Palms implementation, as far as I understand, needs to actually commit some changes to the storage so it cannot afford uh, to uh, panic uh, and revert all the changes down to the storage, uh, which was the main uh, reason uh, for Ben to. Uh, align the existing interface with like the other method called claim and uh, create account, which actually just returns the value through uh, Boolean value as a result. So yeah, I, so my the, main concern is, is, is compatibility, to be honest. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with Boolean, I'm fine with any other value. I want to understand what would be the path forward if we break the API. Or like, or, or do, do we want to keep the legacy contract as is and then introduce a separate like handle handlers for for it going forward? Ben, do, do you have uh yeah, this is this is probably the only the only comment that I'm that I'm like not entirely 100 percent sure how to proceed with. Um you know, just yeah. the, the unfortunate reality, I mean, in, just for some context on, on the key palm side, like uh, we, we've hyper optimized uh, all the link drops so that when a key is used uh, and deleted, because uh, when you when you create a link drop, you pay way more than what you actually use in terms of allowance on the key, it, you're, you're paying for the pessimistic allowance. And so, you you know, let's say you attach 100 teragas to the transaction, you have to have an access key with like 171 teragas worth of allowance. Um, and you're only ever really going to be using like, you know, 30, 40 teragas. And so, you know, you're you're paying for like five times more than what you actually use. And so on our contract, um, we refund um, the unused allowance, but 
in in the accounts try like in the state in the runtime we don't have access to the access keys uh, allowance uh, at runtime like the the signer's public key we only have the public key but we don't have the allowance um and you know i tried to make an nep for this uh to to expose this in the runtime which would remove our need our 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 need to not panic um but it it, it you know it didn't go through um so you know, I'm more aligned and, you know, there's a ton of security implications here too, because you can't, you, there's no way for you to ensure that a contract won't panic, uh, which is something that we're working towards um, fixing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably fine um, to, to like keep on for, 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 for some more context, we're going to be refactoring the, like basically the entire contract in, in the next couple of, a couple of months. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm fine with bringing back the introduction of, of panics. The, the, like, I mean, the only, the only thing is that, you know, you have all of these outgoing cross contract calls, you know, and like, I'm a, I'm, I assume the worst case scenario, which is like a link drop with, I don't know, five different fungible tokens and I don't know, three different NFTs and some near and stuff. And so you get all these outgoing, you know, receipts, all this stuff happening, all these cross contract calls, all these assets being transferred. And how do you determine the validity of that without, um, or the success of that without bogging down your, bogging down your contract. And I would argue that, um, the success of outgoing assets like NFTs and fungible tokens should probably be handled on the client side. Um, the, the only, the, and, and, and as, as I mentioned here in this comment, the only annoyance uh, is the near value because it's, it's, it's less hard um, or it's, it's harder to determine the success of that when you're claiming to an existing account, when you're claiming to a new account, it's, it's, it's fine. Cause I mean, you can just check if the account was created and has the balance, but if you're claiming to a, an existing account and I don't know, you, it's a, it's a one near link drop. Um, you know, what do you do? You check the account balance before and then after, but you know, there's no guarantee that, you know, the one near came from your link drop contract, um, unless you like sift through receipts and stuff. And like, it's just a mess. Um, and so, yeah, the only annoyance is claiming to an existing account with near everything else I think should be handled on the client side, uh, which is why out of my three options, you know, there was the simple promise, um, or just like kind of don't define the return type or don't define, at least in this NEP, don't worry about success value, leave it to the client or a Boolean indicating whether or not like all the transfers were successful. So you just like, you know, call back, uh, and check if, you know, any of the results were, were a failure and then just return false or whatever, uh, or just, you know, return a Boolean and only care about the near value. Um, those are kind of like the options that I, uh, thought about, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a tricky one because you have all these, and you know, you might have assets down the line where it's like partial success or, you know, partial this or partial that, and it's just kind of complicated. Yeah. I think we cannot disregard the fact that, uh, partial, um, asset uh, transfers will happen because uh, we don't control all that stuff and it could fail for various reasons and we cannot revert uh, those that were already transferred. So it just, well, even have... with in, in, in indefinite amount of uh, to, uh, gas, we, we would have this problem. Uh, Robert? Yeah, so if you scroll up a little bit, I just want to share that, you know, I have like, an opinion about about that. So when you are sharing the screen, if you can scroll up or, a little or bit. Can you? Yeah. Right. So I mean, like the my, my main motivation is for like adding a concrete value um, for the return is really for composability. I mean, panicking is different, like you know, than composability. So here in claim, when I as a contract, for example, if one contract would like to claim for another contract, okay? I don't provide the values I'm claiming. I provide like the claim ID or the queue or whatever, right? Um, so, so think about it like in this way. Um, is it possible, right, that um, I will sign the message uh, send that message to contract A and that contract A will do the claim on contract B, yes, on the leader of contract. Or like, are there any other 
that that's not that's not possible with this NEP because it's defined that the the access key should be limited access key and only point to the link drop contract. So you would never sign a transaction where the receiver is not the link drop contract. Right. At least in this I NEP. Say, yeah, yeah. I I think it doesn't contradict with what I say. So I will sign the message. I mean, user, right? We'll sign the message, but we will send that message to the contract A. And then contract A will do, we'll call a claim. This will still work, right? Because the signature is the same and the, and the, and the link drop contract only verifies like who signs it. It doesn't verify it who's the predecessor. Yeah, but but the signer can only execute transactions on the link drop contract because they only have a limited access key. Well, it yeah. depends on, on the client who set up the uh, link drop, but... Yes, at least in this case. in this NEP, it's it's defined that um that you should like the 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 predecessor should be the signer or sorry the predecessor should be the current account in this NEP. I think this, I wrote that as a this, restriction. No, this NEP doesn't it doesn't make that restriction. And it's in my opinion, it would be interesting just yes, to allow that kind of a scenario, so like a composability. I think that would be a um, different nap, and, and I wouldn't optimize to, to make it too generic. Since we don't provide the value in the claim, we provide, I mean, it's opaque, right? So um, also, I'm I'm just looking back. If I do would like to do some registration, some like I know balance keeping. I, it doesn't know necessarily yes what how was sent. So if you return that value to that contract, then the oh all right, we lost you, Robert. To, to be honest, that that, was, that was to be honest, that was the reason why I finally thought that uh, promise would be okay because we have so many ideas how to define a better return value and to all these cases are pretty specific, like boolean would be enough, string or the whole list of all transferred assets we used together with status and how many statuses uh, are we gonna have and backward compatibility compatibility. Um, and the final thought is that we probably are running out of time boxes defined by uh, this meeting, and we probably had had have to have a separate meeting only for this function, you know, to better. Yeah, I agree. Also, re real quick, uh, Robert, ju just to clarify, so there's no confusions, this NEP does define that the predecessor of claim and create account and claim must be the current account that's written into the standard. And I also want to make sure that we are not hyper optimizing for super generic use case, which we don't know even if it exists. For four years, we have a link drop, which works very well. And uh, it only assumes that the users, the, the, the users will interact with the contract of the link drop through the wallet so. without like intermediate contracts involved there. So please let's not assume that we will like build the link drop as a part of some other flow because link drop is onboarding tool and we want to keep it this yeah, way we yeah. don't want to make it right so this is like my suggestion right sorry my internet connection is not stable can you hear me yeah yeah okay i'm not sure like it's like it should be good but it's just dropping me off so i mean what i wanted to say is that you know i don't see like any reason why we should like be restricted and in my opinion, it's not that complex to basically add the return type. It's like, it doesn't make like the whole, the whole process of implementing the simple version as it is down, down by the, by the, by the link drop or the keep on, uh, more difficult. So me personally, it's like kind of a no brainer. Let's just return the value. So we unlock other use cases in the future. Well, that's what Ben suggests. My concern was that the existing link drop contract panics uh, if 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 something goes wrong and key palm uh, contract returns false and doesn't panic. Mm. So the wallets now needs need to somehow exactly. understand what is actually the failure case, and we need to define it as a standard. Right, but you know, I, it's. It's like more like you know finding what should be the right return value, uh, and and I don't think like it's it's like it's really complex as the the whole implementation. Like it's something that it's easy to update. 
in in my eyes, there's kind of without two, breaking existing flows. There, there, there's, and yes, I agree. We should probably have a separate call about this, um, and and maybe maybe uh, I'll just provide my two cents, and then and then we'll we'll, we'll move on. I, I was just going to say, in my eyes, there's two sort of panics uh, or two um, unsuccessful cases. One is you know, you, you call, you, you try to claim something that's already been claimed or anything kind of like malicious or, or out of the ordinary. And then there's also the case where, um, you know, the, the, the assets were not successfully transferred. Um, like everything went well, you have a valid link drop, everything was fine, but the assets didn't get transferred properly either. You know, you, I don't know, maybe you, you didn't deposit storage on the user's account or something happened uh, for fungible tokens, or I don't know, the NFT, I don't know something like that, uh, or the, you know, something weird. Right. Uh, and there's kind of like two areas. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's maybe move on. Um, and let's, let's, uh, let's can this for now and, and talk about it in another discussion. Cause I don't, you know, I've, I've got a hard stop soon. So I agree. yeah, just real quick. Uh, we have uh, two uh, more unresolved to uh, just minor issues. Uh, I mark them as unresolved. Uh, one is, uh, Yoktoneer field name in the structure. <laughs> and uh, another one for you just... You know, yes, yeah, so I'm back. Yes, yeah, so I'm now. Now. Go, go, go back to the previous slide, Ori. Yeah. And if, yeah, balance uh, number, item number three is unresolved. It's almost resolved. I just marked it like unresolved so we could uh, quickly fix it. And another one is unclear how to distribute gas. Yeah, and the um, actually the discussion about uh, required gas field was not marked as resolved on GitHub. And so I just want to make sure that we are on the same plate, like uh, we are okay if, about required ga gas field. Yeah, it, it, it was resolved. Uh, I will need it to was resolved. So, so you all are okay about it. And we fixed the comment and it's enough. Yeah. All right. So let's mark it as resolved. And then the, the and balance one, uh, we I, I changed it to Yakto near under underscore. Yeah. Uh, or I just, underscore under, yeah. Yeah. I just left the final uh, final uh, comment that that you use uh, camel case, and it's not like in the name naming convention. So we probably want to use. Yeah, uh, I, I switched it to all lowercase. Um, uh, all couple, right. Like so, maybe a couple minutes ago. So. Okay, or you can mark it as resolved as well. So we have just one unresolved issue, which is pretty significant one, I think. Yeah, let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Uh, Robert, do, do you have anything else that you feel like are like we definitely need to address before we move with approving the snap? I mean, yes. I, I see. I see a lot. I mean, like, but yeah. Sorry. Based on what I've seen, I and mean, I was checking it yesterday, like midday, European time, and all of that was not resolved. So, I mean, one general comment is that would be great. I mean, don't take me wrong. I think like you know, the whole standard is is good. It's like you know, well thought. But like one general comment is that it would be great if you know like the author like really cleans up all of that stuff right so there were like a few comments which were marked as resolved but then not updated in the in the net itself just to just to to, to, stop, uh, to stop you real quick everything here has been resolved except for the panic in the query function and uh clear up documentation by the way thank you right um so I think we also like decided that you know this get key balance like to remove it. Um, Sorry. It's, I mean, when I was checking it yesterday, it was not removed, and like the decision to remove it was, I guess, like two or three weeks ago. If I understand correctly, Ben said that just it, it was just updated. Today. Yeah, I mean, it would it would have been updated like a couple of weeks ago, but you know, there was there's a ton of comments kind of like in the last couple of days, and so I've been sort of scrambling to get those all in. Right. Um, but yeah, everything here should be should yeah, be yeah. up to Apologize date. Also, like... Except except for the the panic and the documentation, the documentation and the linting errors, I will get to. Just I cannot right now because I'm 
underwater. It'll be post consensus, and that's not really that big of a deal in my opinion. Um, uh, mm-hmm. But it will be, it will be done. The, the the bigger one is the panic, which I mean I think everyone's come to a conclusion except for Robert uh, about the panic. I think that you might still have opinions about that. I don't know, Matt, myself, Lad, and some other people I've talked to are fine with the panic. But yeah, maybe we can talk about that if that's a huge blocker for you. Okay, so okay, so let me only quickly like give you the motivation. Maybe someone will change the mind, but if no, no, no one will change the mind, let's go with majority. Um, so in my opinion, like again, similar as I mean, I posted already in a few places. Like think about it as NFT. Does NFT panics if you query for or fungible token panics? Query functions usually don't panic. That's like one of the design principles. So that's why I'm against it. Like, you know, again, looking from the composability perspective, right? Uh, if I'm like querying something, I don't expect it will panic. It's like panic is unusual situation, situation that, you know, like we should not be able to handle. Right. So now, now think about it. I, I think we need to return. Is, so, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, now think about it. I think we, we need to return an option type. So basically in, Java, in JavaScript world, it will be undefined or null. Uh, that was and, that was my initial um, sort right. of inkling. And, and I commented that. But the problem is that there's a ton of wallets and applications and everything that assume a panic. Um, and so mm. like the, from the backwards compatibility standpoint, it'll be, uh, it'll be kind of annoying. Um, you know, because if it doesn't panic, then they'll assume that it exists and then they'll try to render and it'll lead to weird behaviors because they assume that if it panics, that's the case where it doesn't exist and, you know, everything's good. Um, and so this is why I've written it this way, just because are, there are... Are we sure that... Sorry? Are we sure like this is really the case of the implementation in the wallets? Because yes. really it's an anti-pattern. It's like uh, even... Yes, I'm, I'm sure. I have a wor- I'm worried basically like this pattern will be propagated in like many places. Like, you know, there will be another implementation. I mean, not the link drop, but, you know, something else. And this query functions will panic. Uh, and again, like, you know, I, I, I think agree about that from we, the composability perspective. Yeah, we probably shouldn't take, take it as a precedence. So I, I would consider it to uh, add a comment that it was a compatibility decision to keep a panic there. The problem is that the link drops have been in the wild for so long and there is like no, there has not been a standard for years. And so all of these apps are building off of the assumption that it will panic. And so I would like to keep it that way. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like it's not a huge, you know, like you can like, yeah, you probably should return null, but for the case of backwards compatibility, I would prefer to keep it that way. Actually, Ben, given that we introduce a new method name, uh, can, 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 can we can we use in like yes in the new in the new one? Um, that's a good idea, actually, Vlad. Is in the new one we can probably return uh, a null or an option of key info, but in in the legacy uh, balance um, method, then okay, I, I, I'm I'm in agreement with that. Well, uh, also, to to be honest, guys, I recently Perfect. tried to find also like make. Yeah, we have we have a lag. <laughs> May I say that just makes sense? Yeah, yes, uh, to be honest, uh, go on. Yeah, I I try to find uh, whether the panic in the view method is kind of an, an anti pattern or is not suggested. To be honest, I haven't found any explicit uh, mention about it. So I know what Robert is talking about. We know fungible token uh, maps and they are just return zero and so on. But uh, after the second thought, uh, it's it's probably not an anti-pattern. We can decide, we can discuss, but I don't, don't think- Don't you it's think like, that's no exa- I mean, Don't you think that, you know, like in general, in, in software engineering, you know, exceptions are, should be exceptional. I mean, do in the exceptional situation. I mean, for me, um, maybe that's like the way how I was programming or you know, interacting with it. Yeah, like I think this usually is really... like in, in software, we were trying to avoid panics. Usually, and, yes, but uh... always like, <laughs> so 
So if you agree that with usually, then it means that you know like the other situation is exceptional. And if it's abused, then it's anti-pattern. That, that's like what's usually is the meaning of it. Okay, anyway, um, let's don't, I, I think we can continue. I think we reached the consensus here. Um, okay. Do we? Uh, so, okay, well, I guess so. One, one, yeah, one more thing about. Uh, go ahead, Robert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you go back to one, one slide? Right. So, in fact, like um, another thing, which is like two things which are missing you now, like uh, private key serialization. To be honest, I'm against like using um, proposed Bosch serialization. In the uh, again, it's been today. it's been resolved. So please, please go back and 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 look at look at the GitHub because it's been updated. Everything here has been updated okay. except for the two that I mentioned before. And the registration pattern was also resolved. That is correct. How did you resolve the registration pattern? I put it into the security implications, saying that if it's a fungible token drops or any sort of drop that requires some sort of prerequisite that you should ensure to, you know, do that, for example, uh, registering the new user. Yeah. Just in the interest of time oh. to move forward, we need to have two third majority. These are the old, um, voting indications from the comments and obviously they were prior to the discussion that we just had so they're not very clear in terms of how everyone is leaning so i guess um can we like vlad would you like to try to summarize sort of uh, for on the group or do you want to go around and have everyone yeah. kind of say uh, I, I i think i have a proposal here uh so yeah. it just for for the sake of uh time uh and we had a pretty extensive um discussion already and it seems like only one, one um, uh, claim, the, the claim method um, return value concern is still not addressed. And we, we need to uh, arrive to some dis uh, uh, decision there. Uh, but other than that, it seems like the, we are on the right track to approve the NAP. And uh, I'm, I still lean towards approving the SNAP. And this is my, uh, uh, like, believe that this this nap is, is is critical and we we need to have it um if there are some like foreign cases we need to address them but i i'm i'm going to push it forward i don't think we need another call uh, to do it and discuss it uh, once again we will just do it uh in in the in the pull request itself so once we arrive to the decision um i I'd like I, I will I will uh, reach out to all the I can drive it uh, I will reach out to all the working group members and confirm that everything is good and ask you to post the uh, it as as a message uh, to the pull request and after that we will just merge the pull request without having it, another call for it. Um, how does this sound to you guys, Alex? Yep, um, Robert. The term. Uh, yes, this makes sense. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't basically like refer that we approve it now yet because. Yeah, I, I think we, we are not ready to, to, that, to, you know, to just. One critical yes. thing is. Yeah. Yeah, I just was saying that, you know, we just agree that, you know, at least one critical thing is missing. Maybe. So formally, it's not approved, but uh, as you said, it's it, it's close to be there. Sure. Cool. So are we Again? saying. Okay. Again, do you, do you feel like uh, we need to make ma any major turns here, or are we good here? Uh, I've got some minor concerns about security implication. Basically, I want some implications to be specified more clear but it's not as much about the standard itself but rather like the text mm -hmm. just for just for some some more context i've i think i've addressed all of the concerns that you brought up could you please let me know um because you said i didn't i didn't mention anything about you know ensuring that you can't duplicate assets for a key or whatever uh like you can't try to take the same key and use I, it could you saying and things not duplicating assets. I think the current text is very unclear. It says 
only one key associated with a given assets, like what you could uh, send one NFT and then create multiple link drop with different keys pointing to the same NFT. This obviously should be protected against, but what I was thinking is a different thing, like suppose that you create a new link drop with the same key as an existing one, and if uh, the implementation doesn't check for this, then it will basically overwrite the old link drop, like destroy it and let and have a new link drop in its place, and this is not good because an attacker could just basically destroy watch for link drops and destroy. They don't need the private key to do it. Yeah, I get, I get, I get what you're saying. I think, um, may, like maybe something to consider is, is like whether we standardize the creation of link drops or standardize like the claiming of link drops. And I think that that might fall more under the the category of the creation step. Like, make sure you can't create multiple link drops with the same public key, or you know, make sure they don't get overwritten. But that I don't really think that's the purpose of this standard. Like in my eyes, this is once you have link drops in the wild, regardless of where they came from, how do I claim them? Um, but yeah, I mean, like it, it's not that big of a deal. I could probably write that in because it is like, you know, it, do, it does pertain to link traps as a whole. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that it's that that far of a fetch uh, to, to, to do that. So I'm fine with with that. But just to, to take into consideration that this, I don't know if this is more so for creation or like claiming, you know what I mean? So but yeah, I'll, I'll write that in. Yeah, I think that security considerations should be a bit wider so it's right that this issue is regarding the creation and we don't have a standard which means we just don't have a specific convention like specific method name specific way but still if we have a link drop standard we obviously expect them to be created somehow so yeah, we, that's that's a good point I'll, I'll... <laughs> I'll write that in. I have a hard stop, so I have to go, unfortunately. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I guess we'll, we'll talk asynchronously on, on GitHub. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks so ben. much, Ben. Appreciate all your work on this. Thank you. But, all right. See you later. Yeah. Right. Thanks. So let, let me just sum, summarize it uh, so we are on the same page. We are all very close to the, we are close to the, we are, uh, uh, all agree that this snap is necessary and we want to uh, see it merged. So, and we believe that only one uh, unresolved issue is there that we will all work asynchronously uh, and uh, arrive to some de decision. Uh, so we are not approving the snap yet, but we are not rejecting it. We, we will just uh, uh, have it approved uh, through the uh, pull request discussion uh, on GitHub. Is that okay with everybody? If so, let's like, just thumbs up and move on to the next. I'm good. All right. Awesome. We will move on to the other NEP right now, um, just so that we can um, give it the time it deserves as well. So next is uh, NEP 469. Uh, add NFT metadata update event to NEP 171. Uh, the author of this SNEP was unable to uh, make the call, Laclan, so I asked Evgeny to summarize the NEP on the author's behalf. So, Evgeny. So, the idea is simple. We already have contract metadata and contract metadata update event, and we have NFT metadata. And so the, what this snap adds is an event when NFT metadata is updated. The purpose is to allow tools to track changes to NFT metadata because there is no standardized way how it's stored. It's basically an implementation detail of the NFT contract. So without an event, those tools will need to query NFT metadata potentially every block on every NFT to just to know if it changed. And this is not really practical. So the idea is that instead they could watch for this event and query the metadata only when this event is triggered. 
and for this reason, this event actually only includes NFT IDs and not the metadata itself, because once you know that metadata changed, you can just use the view method to query it this way. All the tools like wallets, uh, explorers, whatever could watch for this event, query the metadata only once this event happens. And this event tells that NFT metadata changed for specific tokens. Awesome. Thank you for, for that great summary. Uh, so yeah, this NAP also had um, some discussion on GitHub and I'd love to invite Robert, if you're still there, to maybe give some a quick summary of some of the benefits and concerns before we get to the actual votes. I think it's needed, like it's really missing. I mean, like the event is something that people want to observe, but on the other hand, like we should not uh, bloat event with all possible data, right? Like copy it because indexers have the access to the to the chain. So I think that was like the only thing I was discussing there, right? So um, so it's really about like, you know, what and how we want to, um, to, to notify and then um, not copying everything because it also like creates a bad pattern in my opinion. Like if you standardize something, you know, uh, it's something that, you know, people will learn from and people will replicate in in maybe um uh, more customs uh, in more custom um contracts or more custom applications right so uh, i think like the, on, the only issue i had there is is like putting too much into the uh, event itself uh, j just to mention that uh, Evgeny actually brought a very good point that uh, it, this this snap helps uh, the whole ecosystem of indexers to um, implement more efficient way to, to keep track of the, the existing NFTs uh, who that were issued before but then uh, changed over time, and there were different ideas and different reasons why that could happen. And given that we already have the contract metadata update event it was natural to add another one uh, to track the individual NFT um, uh, metadata updates. So if, if uh, a URL to, to the resource has changed or um, something else inside the metadata has changed, there is a chance to flag it from the contract to all the indexers out there by emitting this new type of event that is standardized now and part of the NAP uh, 171. Um, given that it's a non-breaking change, uh, it was uh, easy to buy in and uh, let it be there uh, for whoever needs it. It's very hard to enforce though. So they, uh, when we come to the concerns part, uh, there is a already existing foundation of, um, of, uh, of contracts. Um, Rick, can you uh, go to the next slide, please? Uh, so yeah, uh, the legacy contracts out there don't support this method, uh, but the um, hope is that going forward with more uh, contracts appearing on the network, they will actually pick it up and the indexers' lives will be much easier going forward and they will need to maintain the custom logic for all the new uh, contracts. They will probably be forced to maintain some heuristics for the old contracts, uh, for example, not all the contracts need to be updated. Need to will leverage the fact that uh, the okay. NFT could be updated. Some of the contracts only mint them and never update. Uh, it's I believe the most of them actually these days. Um, and uh, the other, the only concern that was there in the very beginning is that uh, NFT underscore update was the event name. And it was ambiguous, uh, so the proposal was approved to to change it to NFT underscore metadata underscore update name. Um, otherwise, uh, no other concerns were raised on this pull request uh, of this uh, NAP extension. And uh, yeah, I believe all the working group members were uh, agree in agreement that it's good to have, and uh, we can merge it. Uh, approve it now, but uh, yeah, we are ready to vote. Um, and we have all the um, indications already posted on the GitHub. 
um, let me know. Like, uh, if if anybody from the working group has any concerns, um, do you want to speak now, or we're approving it? Approve. Um, yeah. So maybe I think it's better now. Just wanted to like know. Uh, uh, yes. So just wanted like to basically repeat like you know I added a comment about that memo field basically to raise the concern, but this is like a side comment more about like mm -hmm. thinking for forward yes about it but yes uh 100 approving cool cool all right it was quick <laughs> yeah that was an easier one for sure nice to end with a good with a good uh with a, with a decision so all right uh we will uh summarize the the next steps on this snap and also on the other one after this call normally we would open it up to q a but since we're short on time i guess um if you have any questions please drop them in the chat box and we can come back to it uh but really i just want to say a huge thank you to uh everyone who was involved um in both of these NEPs. Uh, you know the the authors, the the all the subject matter experts, uh, the work group members. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and thoughtfulness to arrive to these decisions for the ecosystem, and I really appreciate uh, the healthy discussion that we had today. So just to close it off, I do want to quickly highlight some of the ways that you can get involved in the near developer ecosystem. So if you have a specific idea in mind, you can submit it using the Dev Hub or find other communities to collaborate with. If you have a technical idea that you want to get integrated into the ecosystem or you're seeking funding, you can also submit a NEP after posting your initial idea on the Dev Hub. You can also view all of the NEPs and their various statuses on GitHub and join their discussions there. And then if you want to join the community, you can check out the, the Near Contract Standards a Telegram community group. It's a great place to connect with others. You can learn more about uh, everything that's going on on the near devgov org website and our social channels and we thank you so much uh, for attending today's call and hope you have a good rest of your day take care